Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Matt Pat. That's right, Sean. I snuck onto your show. Why? Because you've invited a bunch of other YouTubers onto Hot Ones, but never me. What gives? You saw I have a food channel now, right? Well, you know, what the hell? That's right, a food channel. You probably thought I'd come on here and talk about super boring science stuff. Well, I'm here to talk about super exciting science stuff. Now then, I've prepared a presentation on the transient receptor potential cation channel subfamily V member one. One very long presentation later. And there you have it. It. What do you think? Whatever, but like at this point, like, I, you know, it's hard for me to even look at a chicken wing. internet welcome to food theory the show that spices up science by peppering in puns so one show i resent not being invited on to i mean one show i enjoy watching online is hot ones which as you probably know combines celebrity interviews with pain by forcing both interviewer and interviewee to eat spicier and spicier chicken wings as the episode progresses <laughs> i don't want to do that. kansas don't know how to do no hot wings Oh! Oh! Guess what got me? God! <laughs> On their final interview question, guests take on the infamous last dab sauce, made from the hottest peppers in the entire world. And, uh, I just so happen to have myself a bottle of the last dab sauce that I've been saving for a special occasion. Just look at that thing. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, if it seems like I'm totally brown-nosing the show, it's because I totally am. I want to be on Hot Ones. And just in case I ever do get called up to the big leagues, I gotta be prepared. That's why today, Steph and I are getting spicy. Uh, ooh, phrasing. Gotta try that one again. Uh, that's why today, Steph and I are bolstering our spice tolerances and doing some spicy science. Today, through good old research and experimentation, we're gonna show you and ourselves how to stay cool while eating hot, hot wings by testing the best antidotes the internet has to offer. All right, so we are here in the spice lab, as I like to say. It is our pale imitation of the first we feast hot one set. Okay, so where are we starting in terms of like relative tolerance to spice? I already know, but you should say anyway. I'd say I'm decent with spicy foods. Okay. Stephanie, meanwhile. I'm a wimpy. The first step in our quest to make spicy a bit more icy is to figure out which spice antidotes to test. On hot ones, the go-tos are water and milk, so we'll definitely be testing those, but guests on the show are also welcome to bring in their own home remedies, and they've brought in all sorts of creative spice chasers. Avocado, alcohol, Thai iced tea, donuts, even straight up lemon and juice. And the internet has plenty of other suggestions too. And I do mean plenty of other suggestions. So in order to identify which ones we want to test, we first have to know how spice works. When we talk about the spice in a pepper, what we're really talking about is the chemical capsaicin. And yes, I'm pronouncing it capsaicin because that's how Miriam Webster told me to pronounce it, even though I have never once heard anyone in my life pronounce it that way. Capsaicin. So if you don't like it, take it up with both Miriam and or Webster. When you eat a spicy pepper, capsaicin molecules attach to trip v1 receptors in your tongue which trigger a pain signal to your brain in addition to spice trip v1 receptors also detect acidic conditions and hot temperatures in your mouth basically whenever they get activated the result is a stinging hot pain so if you've ever bitten into a jalapeno and felt like your mouth is burning well that's because capsaicin has activated the exact receptors that would tell your brain if there was an actual fire in your mouth and in case you're wondering yeah you've got trip v1 receptors all along your gastrointestinal tract and i do mean all the way to the end. So if you've ever eaten something spicy and felt it later on, that's why. Now, the more capsaicin a pepper has, the more trip V1 receptors it activates in your mouth, and the spicier it's gonna be on your tongue. Fans of Hot Ones know all about the Scoville scale, which describes the heat level of a pepper based on its capsaicin concentration. For reference, a regular old bell pepper has zero Scoville heat units, or SHUs. A typical jalapeno might have 8,000 or so, and the Maruga scorpion pepper, the hottest pepper known to mankind in 2012, and also the pepper from which my bottle of the last dab sauce is derived,
arrived averages 1.2 million SHUs. Why did I specify the year 2012, by the way? Because the Maruga scorpion pepper is no longer the hottest pepper in the world. You see, humans have gotten real good and real aggressive about breeding super hot peppers in recent years, and as a result, no pepper stays atop the pedestal for long. Since 2011, five different chili peppers have held Guinness's title of world's hottest pepper. If you went anywhere near YouTube in 2017 or 2018, then you're mighty familiar with the current record holder, the Carolina Reaper, which averages over 1.6 million SHUs. The Pocky One Chip Challenge. It's made with a Carolina Reaper, and there's only one in each package. There's nothing to me. Ah. <laughs> so Link has the hiccups. Instant regret. Uh, Rhett looks like he wants to <laughs> die. <laughs> my tongue's like about to fall off. <laughs> I don't know, it just got my lips. So yeah, the race to make the world's hottest pepper has gotten fast and furious, and Hot Ones has managed to keep up with it all. The latest iteration of the Last Dab sauce is derived from Pepper X, which is rumored to have up to 3.18 million SHUs, basically twice as hot as the Carolina Reaper, although that's yet to be confirmed by Guinness. So a Last Dab sauce at least that spicy awaits me if I ever happen to be invited on the show, which means that I have to beat capsaicin by dissolving it, by overpowering it, or even by soaking it up. After seven rounds of testing antidotes, Steph and I will use that info to develop the ultimate spice chaser recipe and test it against the last dab sauce as our grand finale. First up, we tried soothing our tongues with good old fashioned water, an option made available to Hot Ones guests in like every episode. Should we cheers? Oh, cheers. Cheers. Ding! Capsaicin, like many oily substances, is insoluble in water, which means it doesn't dissolve in water. So while cool water may feel temporarily soothing from a temperature standpoint, it doesn't actually break capsaicin molecules down at a molecular level the way that some other chasers we'll be testing out today will. I think I'm gonna go ahead and drink the water because I- I my, feel the burning. My mouth is definitely at a heat level where I would be able to tell if it were reduced. Right. Oh yeah, no, totally. While the water's in there, it feels better, but as mm -hmm. soon as I swallow, it just comes right back, actually. Yeah, while it's sitting in your mouth and on your tongue, it feels like it kind of like drowns it out for a minute or two. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, as soon as you swallow it down, it is it is no bueno. On a scale of how effective was it, F to A plus, what would you say? Um, uh, What is the lowest passing grade? D? Like D. D. D for don't give that to me after something really spicy. D for it didn't do a whole lot. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say like C. It's like, didn't really do anything, but at the same time, like, you know, wasn't offensive. I think we should move on to the next one. All right, next. Next, we tried whole milk as our soothing agent. Milk is another go-to chaser in hot ones, but unlike water, it also comes highly recommended by science. 80% of the protein in cow's milk is casein, which does have the ability to dissolve capsaicin molecules. This is for the same reason that soapy water is better at getting grease off a pan. Soap molecules surround and carry away grease molecules, and so, in theory, does casein. But in order to understand how well milk works, we need to try it for ourselves. Oh yeah, that's pretty darn good. So again, oh wow, mm -hmm. oh wow, that actually does like because I feel where the where the milk didn't touch, I still feel it burning like on my lips. Yep. But in my mouth, it's actually really nice and and neutralized. It doesn't feel cold or anything, but it feels cool. It comes back certainly, but slower and less strongly. The pain. Mm -hmm. So it's actually really pleasant. I would give milk like a B plus or something. Milk did a really good job with the inside of your mouth and maybe keeping it cool for about 15 seconds. I would say B plus too. Yeah. I think so too. So milk worked better than water, but I'm not convinced a B plus is gonna be cutting it against the last dab sauce. So we continued with alcohol. Since capsaicin is soluble in alcohol, science left us with little choice but to go in and buy some vodka. We are actually not drinkers. We just don't like the taste of alcohol actually. And so we had to go out and, and buy alcohol for this experiment because we don't just like keep high concentration alcohol on hand in our house. We're what we call educational drinkers, where we like learning about alcohol and taste testing a lot of them and learning about the history and being able to like identify interesting things and the flavors of them. But when it comes to like actively seeking it out for enjoyment, we're just not those people. Yeah, we're not those people. Getting crunk in the name of science, woo! All right, cheers. Cheers. Boop, boop. Okay, here we go. Mm. There was no cup for this. This is classy. Here on Food Theory, we're classy stuff. This is gonna get us demonetized, isn't it? Nostrovia! We can always cut this one. Oh, if science! It does. 
Oh, vodka. Oh, that made it worse. Ah! Oh, it did. Oh, God. Ah! Why isn't it working? Ah! Oh, so geez. Whoa, it's like everywhere and it's uh, hotter. Uh, uh, Why? Th th from a chemistry perspective, I thought it was soluble. What happened? There's so much saliva in my mouth that I want to spit it out. Science has lied to me and I don't know why. I'm going to do some research and follow up in probably VO to explain why this did it worse. Thanks, me. I'll take it from here. Turns out alcohol is a bit of a double-edged sword when it comes to fighting spice. It's true, alcohol dissolves capsaicin, but even an 80-proof alcohol like vodka is mostly water. And on top of it, it turns out that ethanol also activates trip V1 receptors, which is probably why the vodka, which is four 40% ethanol added to our overall pain. Like, I'm actually sweating after that one because it's like, wow, that made it a lot worse. I know, that was bad. Oh, that, that is terrible. Bad. F, 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 F's across F, the board. F. Round number four. I hope it's a lot better. Uh, this one's lemon juice. So uh, the rationale here is, first off, if you watch the Gordon Ramsay episode of First We Feast's Hot Ones, he just downs this stuff by the boatload. And so we're like, well, we got to test it out. Do you know anything about the chemistry here? Yeah, so lemon juice is acidic. That means it has a low pH. And funny enough, capsaicin is, at least compared to lemon juice, a base. So in theory, eating a in food theory. Drinking a lot of lemon juice should help neutralize the capsaicin. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, lemon juice. Okay, ready? Cheers. Ah. Woo, over the teeth, over the gums. It is helping. But yeah. also the lemon flavor is so tart. So far and away, lemon juice is the number one it's like a heat more, reducer right now. Yeah, it's like a more permanent solution, actually. The downside to lemon juice is you're drinking lemon <sighs> juice. Lemon juice, thumbs up. I would give that one. I would give that an A. A for me. What about you? A minus. A minus, okay. <laughs> Round number five, sugar water. Matthew's too nice to tell you this, but I've started burping a lot off, of ca off camera. It's really bad. It's true, but I, okay. I respect her privacy because women don't burp no. or pee or poop. <laughs> This is what I've learned. Now, for this round, we absolutely saturated room temperature water with granulated sugar. That means we kept stirring in more and more and more sugar until the water couldn't dissolve anymore. This home remedy is all about taste. The sugar won't dissolve the capsaicin molecules the way the milk did, for example, but our research suggests that the sweet taste will simply overpower the spiciness and drown it out with a strong, pleasant flavor. <sighs> wow, that works really well. <sighs> that- Oh, sweet relief, literally. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> sweet relief. Good job. Good job. Cheers to that. Like, as soon as I pour this in my mouth, the spice just disappears. It just goes away immediately, almost entirely. And it stays that way for a good couple of seconds. When I swallow it, then the spice creeps back. Unlike the lemon juice, which kind of noticeably took it down levels every time I took a sip, this one comes right back. It comes back and it's at the same level. In the first five seconds, it's like an A plus. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's like B it, minus. It does dip off, which averages out to like uh, A minus. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so there fine. you go. We agree. We gave bread a shot because some home remedies claim that starches help soak up oily capsaicin, kind of like a mop would. We also saw Gordon Ramsay bust out donuts during his Hot Ones appearance. So I'm curious to know whether those were entirely about the sweetness or if the bread itself does some of the legwork too. But hey, whether or not this one works, it's just an excuse to eat bread. And who doesn't love an excuse to eat bread? Oh, look. Uh, I made a Stephanie sandwich. Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> Mm. It's a Stephanie sandwich. Mm. Mm. And we quickly discovered that the bread alone was not going to help. This isn't really doing anything. Right? The what? only This is such a ripoff. What is this doing? My mouth is so hot right now. Which is surprising because this is one of those really popular myths, right? right? That bread right. and like bread carbs. Supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. that, and you see people like shoveling it down. It's not doing anything. No, it just tastes good after you eat a hot wing. Yeah, it's, it's actually less effective than water. So I'd say this is like D. Finally, round number seven. Here it is, the grand finale. The nectar of the gods, Diet Coke. Oh, How's your mouth feeling at this point, Steph? Uh... Okay, I'll admit it. There wasn't much scientific reasoning behind this one. We just happened to have Diet Coke in the fridge, and you know me. I never turned down a chance to riot with the diet. Honestly, we went into this expecting Diet Coke to be the worst of the bunch. The idea of carbonation bubbles adding to the spicy pain just didn't seem all that pleasant. <laughs> Diet Coke for the memes, for the tradition. This is gonna be bad. Will the nectar of the gods cure us? <sighs> oh, it actually works surprisingly well. 
Yeah! Turns out Diet Coke isn't half bad as a spice chaser. Way to go, buddy. I shouldn't have doubted you for a moment. And there's actually a couple reasons for this. First, it's fairly acidic with a pH of about 3.2, which means that it's working in largely the same way that the lemon juice did. Second, it had an overpowering sweet flavor that did the trick pretty nicely. And the carbonation bubbles didn't really bother us like we thought they would. It's interesting. The carbonation gives your tongue, I guess, something different to feel on it. And so you have these, like, bubbles popping in your mouth, and so I guess your mouth is confused. They say that the aspartame in Diet Coke is actually much sweeter than your mouth can actually even process. Yeah. The sweetness actually does have an effect. Wow! Nectar of the gods, man! It's not one that, like, numbs it long term, but as, like, an immediate solution, it works really well. So I'd say this one is, like, B-plus territory. Yeah, B, B, plus, B plus. Yeah, it's not, it's not as good as lemon juice, certainly, and it's not as good as pure sugar water. This doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. No, the bread still doesn't work, yeah. Steph. So with all seven rounds under our collective belt, Steph and I reconvened in the kitchen to develop our ultimate spicy food antidote. We kept a few key takeaways in mind. One, acids like lemon juice really seem to work best for permanently dulling spice pain. Two, overpowering sweetness like the sugar water and to a lesser extent the Diet Coke really helped kill off the spicy pain in the short term. And third, we both agreed that we shouldn't overlook casein as milk definitely dulled the pain as well. So we looked into recipes that incorporated all three elements of our takeaway trifecta, acidity, sweetness, and casein. However, this wound up being easier said than done since acids, such as lemon juice, cause milk to curdle when they're added together. Now, we were able to find some drinks out there that technically accomplish the trifecta, like Brazilian lemonade, which incorporates limes, along with sugar and condensed milk, but in this recipe, a fair amount of water is also added in order to stave off curdling, so it's a no-go. Weakly acidic liquids like coffee are able to combine with dairy and sugar, but we found the acidity of coffee was too weak to make a difference against even our medium levels of spicy sauce. Since getting a lot of acidity and sugar and dairy looked to be out of the question, we decided to focus on our two strongest performers, acidity and sugar. This eventually led us to a lime simple syrup, which is essentially lime juice jam-packed with so much sugar that it takes on an oozy, more viscous consistency. Steph and I found that not only did it taste great and kill off medium level spices really well, but the additional viscosity was a huge help in stamping out spice pain because it hung around on our tongues a lot longer than runnier liquids, especially when it was served cold. Now, this whole simple syrup breakthrough got Steph to go on the viscosity train in a big way. In fact, she wound up ditching my solution and going off to make her own super viscous chaser using honey for its intense sweetness and peanut butter, which provides plenty of oils to bond to the capsaicin. So, with our two spice chaser antidotes in hand, there was nothing left to do than test them out against the final boss of the episode, The Last Dab. Woo! All right, Steph, you ready? No. I know I know how much you love spicy food. Are we going to do a dab, multiple dabs? Whoa. Ready? 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 One, two, three. Go. It's definitely hot. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. There it is. There it is. Let's get the it's antidotes hot. going. It's, okay. it's heating up. I'm getting hot and sweaty. <laughs> I'm getting there. Are you drinking my drink? Oh, I got it, got it, oh. It's definitely lingering in the back of my throat now. Hmm. Okay, I like it, this is good. I feel pretty good. You can definitely feel the heat surging mm. back into your mouth, and it's a lot faster than with the, the mm -hmm. lesser spicy wings. It happens a lot faster and it comes back much more intense. But again, I think my solution is working pretty well. Here's the thing, the combination is actually the way to go. Really? So putting that in your mouth, Okay. it Here. coats it, it gives you a different taste. Mm. It gives you a different sweetness, but oh, the peanut butter sticks on your tongue and actually holds some of the spice on there. It does. It's like uh, a band-aid for your mouth. Uh-huh. Ooh. It's also delightful. Mm -hmm. Wow, it is I hot. noticed that a lot. Oh, God, it's so hot. It's not leaving. It's so hot still. Oh, God, it's worse. It, it took a long time to bloom. It took a long time to get there, but it's there. I hate breathing. Yeah, hashtag relatable there. Oh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, breathing doesn't help. So the other theory yeah, behind this was that a lot of Thai food uses a lot of peanut in sauces in combination with a lot of spicy things. So right. I thought that maybe... It doesn't go away. It doesn't no. go away. So I thought that that maybe would help. It doesn't go and away. even with both. I like, I like my drink. I think I gotta give the most points to my drink. 
This is a your drink is cold. Oh, that, it right? is nice. <laughs> that's the thing that's missing, I think, from this. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the simple syrup or the peanut butter honey mixture was enough to completely neutralize the last dab sauce. That spice kept coming back, and with an intensity that honestly was shocking. But we felt that we came a long way in separating the myths from the reality when it comes to combating spicy food, and we've armed ourselves with the science that we need to compete in the arena with the big boys. If I ever get tapped for hot ones at any point, I am showing up with an arsenal of sugary lime water, peanut butter cups, and maybe even a swig or two of Diet Coke. Sean Evans doesn't know it yet, but he's met his true match in science. I'm ready whenever you are, buddy. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appétit. While we're on the subject of surviving foods, check out our episode on surviving radioactive foods. Yeah, we do that kind of thing on this channel too. And the way 2020 is going might be wise to snag some tips for feeding yourself post-apocalypse. So hit that subscribe button if that sort of content is interesting to you. And if you do, well, then I'll hopefully see you next week for our next upload.